There is a shameful family secret when it comes to the Khan family's women, according to the Illuminantes of the neighborhood, and it involves betrayal and possibly even murder. Oh my, it's so bad that Maniva Khan insisted that her family move to America to escape it back in Pakistan. So let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of what we know right now as of episode two of the Miss Marvel miniseries dropping on Disney Plus so far. There's spoilers, all right? Big ol' spoiler alert just in case you didn't see episode two yet. But otherwise, let's go. Welcome back to the Mama Saga, where this Marvel-loving mama is a mother by day, but breaks down comic book sagas, movies, and shows like Miss Marvel by night. So we learned a lot in episode two when it comes to Kamala's multi-generational family legacy. So in a recent video I did entitled, Who is Miss Marvel's Grandmother? I discussed my theory about Nanny, her connection to the bangle, and how it might just be a negaband that has a connection to the cosmic realm, the Kree, and more. So if you didn't watch that video yet, make sure you circle back around to it after watching this video. Anyway, I think what we discovered in episode two doesn't really change anything I said in that video. But what is surprising is the fact that the big story about how Kamala's family came to be, well, shall we say different, did not originate with Nani at all. While she and Kamala were talking on the phone, yes, Nani did ask Kamala whether the Khan family had received her package of personal effects, and Kamala said yes, they did. Sure, Kamala did ask Nanny about the bangle bracelet, but Nanny had a very evasive answer to the question, saying that bangle belongs to my mother, Aisha. Then, as Kamala's pressing Nanny for more details, she adds, I'm not going to talk about the bangle at all. Your mother will get upset. Yusuf's outside the door and eventually makes his way in and the phone call is over. Kamala didn't get any answers. In fact, she's got more questions because now she knows that while her nanny might have been a dreamer living in a fantasy world that might have involved the bangle at some point, the truth is great grandma was the first in line first in line to use the bangle and or to have special powers, that is. Great-grandma Aisha has quite a backstory, and in episode two of Miss Marvel, we get bits and pieces of the sordid story. For example, we learn from a dinner time story that both Yusuf and Maniba Khan tell, some of the older members of Maniba's family moved from Bangladesh to Karachi, which happens to be the largest city in Pakistan and the 12th largest city in the world. Yusuf specifically explains that back then there was no Pakistan. At one point in time, you see, lands in and around that area were British owned. When the British left, Maniba explained, they had left those who lived in the area, quote, with a mess, and it was very hard for the people, and then there was a civil war, unquote. When Maniba leaves the room to go to the kitchen, Yusuf whispers to everyone at the table, quote, there's a story about Maniba's family, unquote. He adds that Maniba's mother and maternal father, you know, Maniba's grandfather, had to get on the last train out of the city. Now, Maniva's mother, Sina, got separated from her father at the train station. Her father tried to find her, but he was injured. He needed a walking stick to get around and couldn't really be of much help. Little Sina managed to get on the train just before it pulled out of the station, and no one knew how. As Yusuf is telling this part of the story, the camera is on Maniba, and there's a dark, uncomfortable look on her face. It's clear that Maniba knows more than what Yusuf is telling. Possibly she knows more than he currently knows about in terms of what happened, what her family could do, and so on. Now, Yusuf insisted that when asked how she found her father in all of the chaos, Sina said that she followed a trail of stars right back to her father. When asked what happened to Sina's mother, Yusuf says, we don't know. She disappeared that night like many others did. Coincidence? I think not, folks. Not to be outdone, Kamala Khan has an opportunity to speak to some of the neighborhood aunties <laughs> when the mosque throws a carnival for its members. That's where 
Kamala gets more details and a warning. The Illuminantes, as Kamala and Nakia call them in episode two, are these women who collectively know everything. And Kamala kind of begins to strike pay dirt there. Many people knew her, said one, meaning Sina, but probably wish they hadn't. Another auntie says, you have a good mother, Kamala. She does not deserve the shame this woman brought to her family. Yet another auntie says, my father called her a snake. She put a curse on everything she touched. And the hits just keep on coming. I heard she had a secret affair and took off with someone, says one. I heard she had many affairs and that she had a secret family, says another. And I want to say that yet another woman adds, I heard that she killed a man and it happened during the partition. Everyone there collectively acts shocked and or disgusted by the allegation. Now we the audience get another clue or Easter egg in the form of Kamala's great grandmother's name, Sina. In Arabic, the name means dazzling. And that's the sort of word that would perfectly fit the women of Kamala's maternal bloodline if they, with or without the Bengals' assistance, were projecting glowing, blinding, hard light at any point in time. Now, the snake part or cursing everything she touched, that allegation, perhaps the older Pakistani crowd didn't understand the hard light that surrounded Sina. Let's say if she used her powers in front of them, where the light surrounded her like a second skin, like it did for Kamala in episode one. And then when she was done using her powers, she'd shed that dazzling purplish glowing skin. You know, like a snake would shed a layer of its skin. Maybe they thought the hard light projections were a curse or haram or somehow forbidden. And the story another auntie told about Sina possibly killing someone, even as a little girl, during the partition, which divided British India into two separate countries, India and Pakistan, that could have happened. I could see that little girl's life being in danger and her having no choice but to fight her way to her father as he's getting on the last train out of Bangladesh. I'm going to cover the partition and my theories about it and its importance to the MCU in a separate video because... There's no way episode two focused on that historical event to the extent that it did, only for it to be a simple footnote in the origin story of Kamala Khan. You'll see why I think that in that video, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But what I'll say now is that the partition created one of the most calamitous refugee crises in history that involved large-scale violence. Poor little Sina probably had no choice but to kill someone using her powers to survive and make it out to her father, the last train leaving the area, and to safety overall. Now, the part about Sina having many affairs and having a secret family, what do I think of that? You let me know what you think in the comments. I can't wait to read them, but me. I think that Sina is of Cree origin. She probably had a Cree family off in the cosmos somewhere. She happened to be on Earth, fell in love with an Earthling, living in Bangladesh, and ended up having a child with him as a result of that love, and that was Nani. Um, is that possible that Sina is inhuman and not Cree in, or in terms of her origin? Maybe, but I think that might not be the case only because the Inhuman series is not considered... I don't think to be canon in the MCU. But that said, Ensign Mount showed up from the Inhumans as part of the Illuminati in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So maybe we've got the Inhumans being introduced into the MCU this way after all. The Mama Saga post credit scene. Don't forget, my full-blown and in-depth review of Miss Marvel Episode 2 has already dropped. I don't think I missed a single Easter egg, and I've got a great theory that involves Chekhov's gun and several plot points that are continuing to unfold, even outside of what I discussed in this video. So if you haven't seen that replay of my recent live stream yet, be sure to check it out, because in the next planned episode of the Mama Saga, 
we're going to review Kamala Khan's big emotional struggle with her secret identity and how something like that may be something you struggle with. And if there's anything that makes the content different on my channel from other creators, it's that I want you to be the hero in your life and not the villain. So stay tuned because I'm going to weave what's happened in episodes one and two together so far into an analysis of what Kamala is struggling with and how she can deal with it successfully. And maybe that advice might help you or someone you know too, if you are struggling with a secret identity of your own, let's say. Anyway, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to the Mama Saga for more comic book saga breakdown salty mama style. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.